Even though I enjoy revisiting objects that I've photographed previously to make new improvements, I also take time to photograph new objects as well. And tonight I'm going to be doing just that. I got a head start on some new data yesterday evening, and tonight I'll be collecting additional photons to add to the collection. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session. As I continue to collect my first light on the jellyfish nebula. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Index Catalog 443, or the Jellyfish Nebula, is a supernova remnant located in the constellation of Gemini at a distance of 5,000 light years away from Earth. The nebula occupies an area of 50 arc minutes, which is larger than the full moon. The supernova that created the nebula occurred between 3,000 and 30,000 years ago and produced a neutron star in its aftermath. The presence of the neutron star and the nebula's location in the star-forming region indicate that the remnant was created by a type II supernova, one that was triggered by a rapid collapse of a star with a mass at least eight times that of the Sun. The neutron star is moving away from the site at about 800,000 kilometers per hour. So for this imaging session, I'll be using my quadruplet astrograph refractor telescope, the Orion Eon 70 ED. And for imaging, I'll be using my one-shot color CMOS camera the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And as usual, this will all be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And I'll also be using a new piece of equipment in the form of the Optolong L Ultimate Multi Band Pass Narrow Band Filter. So, with all that being said, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Jellyfish Nebula. Although it's the first day of spring in the Northern Hemisphere, it's still a bit chilly in the Astro Park tonight. But regardless, I was able to get through all of my setup procedures for all of my equipment, and my imaging session for the Jellyfish Nebula is now currently underway. So you can see in this single three minute exposure, Although it may seem a bit underwhelming at first, you can see some faint nebulosity right here where my cursor is. So that's the head of the jellyfish nebula. And there's also some nebulosity in this region here as well. And through the power of multiple exposures and stacking in post-production, I should be able to pull out those fainter details. So I want to take a moment to talk about my new filter that I'm using tonight, the Optolong L Ultimate. So just like my Optolong L Extreme, it's a multi-band pass narrow band filter that passes both hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. But the difference is 
it has a narrower band pass at three nanometers compared to the L Extreme's six nanometers. So with that narrower band pass, I'm able to zero in on that HA and O3 signal a little bit better as well as block out more light pollution and more moonlight. So I should have an image that has a higher contrast and more detail. And Optolong recommends that when using the L Ultimate, you should use it with a telescope that's no faster than F4. So if you have a Celestron Edge HD with Hyperstar installed, or a Celestron Rasa, which is at F2, or if you're using a very fast camera lens, with the L Ultimate, you may experience some halos around the bright stars. So I could use my L Extreme with those applications. But apart from that, the filter seems to be performing really well so far, and I'm really liking the results that I'm seeing. And as usual, I'll be taking a series of three minute exposures. I was able to collect a couple hours yesterday evening, so tonight I'm hoping to get that same amount and possibly more to play around with that data. And I've also noticed there's some wispy clouds coming in from the south, so hopefully that doesn't interfere with any of my work, but I'll be keeping a close eye on the weather to see if that changes as well. So yeah, apart from that, everything's going pretty smoothly, so I'll continue to monitor the imaging session, and I'll see how the night progresses. When I was a kid, all I could dream about was to one day go into space. And although my astronaut dreams never came to completion, I was still fortunate enough to have been able to fulfill that dream in some capacity as a NASA engineer. But you don't have to be an astronaut to explore space. As amateur astronomers and astrophotographers, we explore space on every available clear night, and our telescopes serve as our own personal spacecrafts. Want to check out the Great Red Spot on Jupiter and its Galilean moons? You can do that. Want to fly over to the Milky Way's next door neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy? You can do that as well. These objects and more are things that I've personally photographed in previous years, and it's always a fun time to come back to these objects to see if I can make some additional progress. However, I'd like to also encourage you to photograph new objects as well. Because let me tell you, whenever I collect my first photons, and see that first sub-exposure of an object that I've never photographed before, I still get that same level of excitement, just like when I took my first astrophoto. And it's a great way to apply all the knowledge you've acquired about acquisition and image editing to this new object to get the best image possible. So, is there an object that you're excited to observe or image for the first time this year? Let me know about it in the comment section down below, and I hope you have an amazing experience. Well, my target has gone behind some trees now, so I have to wind things down for tonight. I was able to capture two hours and 15 minutes of data tonight, and putting that together with the two hours I got yesterday evening, that should give me about four hours and some change for this new data set, which I think is pretty good. 
Also, the Optolog L Ultimate did an excellent job tonight. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the data quality that it produces in post-production. And fortunately, the wispy clouds that came in earlier this evening were able to dissipate. So fortunately, it didn't interfere with any of my work. And you know the drill by now. I'm about to work on my calibration frames. So once I get that finished, I'll pack everything up, go home, and get some well-deserved sleep because I got a meeting tomorrow at NASA early in the morning and I don't want to be late. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy my processed image of the jellyfish nebula at the end of this video. And until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies. Good night.